Monday, July 16, 1945. 230 miles south of Los Alamos, leaders of the infamous Manhattan Project brace themselves as detonation of the world's first ever atomic bomb, fathered by theoretical physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer, becomes an inevitable reality. As the four-ton steel globe, dubbed the Gadget, simultaneously compresses 13.6 pound core of plutonium-239, creating a catastrophic chain reaction of atoms to viciously absorb imploding neutrons and split the atom in two by the trillions. And only 21 days later, the weapon was utilized on Japan, resulting in the instant death of over 100,000. In 1939, a German nuclear physicist named Otto Hahn discovers nuclear fission. The process of splitting an atom in two, sending a stark shock throughout the global scientific community, including theoretical physicist Albert Einstein, who immediately pens a letter to President Franklin D. Roosevelt, warning of the potential military implications of a German bomb yielding the deadly processes of nuclear fission. Quickly pivoting a potential war with Germany from genocide to an extinction event. And as Germany invaded Poland, only 30 days later, the clock was ticking as the world officially entered the hellstorm of World War II. The Germans spearheaded a secretive nuclear program consisting of Germany's brightest scientific minds with the goal of creating a nuclear superweapon to destroy the West. And in a response to the crisis, President Roosevelt established a top secret atomic weapons research program of his own, helmed by Major General Leslie Groves, with the goal of beating the Germans to nuclear domination. And Groves sought out the brightest minds to secure a victory, setting his sights on J. Robert Oppenheimer. With a Bachelor of Science from Harvard University and a doctorate in theoretical physics under the guidance of luminaries such as Paul Dirac at the University of Cambridge, Oppenheimer quickly became a pioneer in the immersive world of quantum mechanics. But it wasn't until he returned stateside, taking a professorship at Berkeley, that his genius truly flourished. After making groundbreaking contributions time and time again, in May of 1942, chairman of the National Defense Research Committee and one of Oppenheimer's former Harvard lecturers, James Conant, tasked Oppenheimer with leading calculations during his trials of fast neutron research. Oppenheimer embraced this task and initiated a school for bomb theory. This team's research and Oppenheimer's leadership quickly caught the attention of Major General Groves. Despite his left-wing views, tumultuous relationships with communist women, and his lack of a Nobel Prize, Groves elected Oppenheimer to spearhead the Manhattan Project and lead an elite group of scientists who were already well-known Nobel Prize holders. They set up shop in the foothills of New Mexico, building a secret military facility dubbed Los Alamos. And by 1943, Oppenheimer and Groves' operation quickly expanded from a few hundred personnel to over 6,000. And by this stage of the war, the Germans were getting closer by the day, turning Oppenheimer's Manhattan Project into a chaotic science experiment to produce the biggest bomb the world has ever seen. Using plutonium-239 and an extremely risky implosion theory, the team calculated various nuclear chain reactions one to rule out ignition failure, and one to rule out the ignition of the atmosphere. Next, this equation required the understanding of neutron moderation of plutonium-239 to ensure the core of the device would undergo sufficient compression before dispersing and undergoing fission. Conventional explosives and initiators were layered within the device to maintain a detonation symmetry, sending shockwaves inward, causing them to converge among the core. 
Once the core's density was to reach a critical point, the plutonium atoms within were forced to enter fission, releasing an enormous amount of energy in the form of heat, radiation, and high-speed particles. This violent chain reaction was theorized by Oppenheim to create an explosive shockwave and massive release of thermal radiation. Nicknamed the Gadget, the device was taken to remote location within the Alamogordo Desert on July 16th of 1945 to put Oppenheimer's theory to the test. Dubbed the Trinity Test, Oppenheimer prepped his team as Groves evacuated all personnel from Los Alamos. And after a hellish night of rainstorms, the skies began to clear. And by 5.30 a.m., the countdown began. Gadget was a success, and its destructive potential held the promise of ending war forever, as the Pacific War against the Japanese quickly escalated, and an invasion of Japan's home islands was projected to be costly in terms of both American and Japanese lives. Congress, with overwhelming acclaim, then voted the declaration of a state of war, and the president signed it three hours after this historic scene. The potential of using nuclear weapons to end the war was put on the table by Truman. And not even 21 days after the Trinity test, Groves moved on with two of Oppenheimer's bombs, leaving Oppenheimer in the dust of Los Alamos. And on the morning of August 6, 1945, Oppenheimer's bomb, nicknamed Little Boy, was dropped over the city of Hiroshima by a B-28 bomber as a direct message to both the Japanese and the Russians. Tens of thousands instantly perished in the bombings. And by December of that year, when the effects of radiation poisoning 
had largely subsided, the death toll rose to over 140,000. Following the destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Oppenheimer pivoted his position on nuclear warfare by joining the Energy Commission, lobbying for international arms control, and advocating for the end of nuclear weapons. But he was far too late, as the US government entered the second Red Scare and further developed a nuclear front against the global superpower of Russia. And Oppenheimer's say and opinions in US affairs became weightless, as his security clearance was revoked in 1954 in the fever of McCarthyism. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. There's a lot more mini documentaries in the works and you don't want to miss them. And if you're interested in some behind the scene footage, you can check me out over on Instagram as well. And let me know what you thought about the video over on Twitter by sharing the hashtag Popoheimer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.